At the heart of the GPS system, and this is kind of a, a point that I wanted to emphasize, is that the system by which it figures out where you are is, is, is called trilateration. And I think it's important to distinguish that this is different from triangulation. Triangulation, we were using angles. And you do use angles in this system too, but in trilateration, the emphasis is on the use of distances to figure out where you are. So essentially what goes on with a GPS system when you, when you have a receiver in your hand, whether it's your phone or an actual GPS unit, is that the, the unit is figuring out essentially how far you are from known positions, which are the satellites. So in this system, the satellites are the reference points. Even though they're moving very quickly and they're orbiting very high in space, we know exactly where they're supposed to be at any given moment. So the only question is, where are you? And again, so your position is essentially determined by how far you are from some number of those satellites. And as we said before, the, um, the magic number is four in this case. More is even better to get even more precise position. Uh, and the concept of the trilateration of figuring out how far you are from those known position works on the basis of time and distance. Because in this case, time and distance are related. Basically, the idea is that each of the satellites is emitting a signal which the receiver is tuned to receive. It's a radio signal. And the radio signals are traveling from these satellites at the speed of light. And they're traveling quite a distance, right? Because these satellites are traveling several thousand miles up above the Earth surface. Um, but they're going to take a little bit of time to arrive there. And depending on how far the satellite is from you, there's going to be a time difference. This is kind of like going back to the Lorraine system. So it's the time difference that we're interested in, right? So it turns out that if we know the speed of the signal, the radio waves, which is the speed of light, uh, and then we multiply that by the time it takes for that signal to arrive at us, we have the distance from that uh, satellite. Right? And if we have the distances from at least four satellites, we can figure out or hone in, trilaterate our position uh, from that, those satellites, and that's how we know where we are. Now, it's What's significant about this system is that it requires an incredible degree of precision in order to work. Okay? So I said before that in order to figure out our distance from, uh, from the satellites, we need to multiply the time delay, the amount of time it takes the signal to leave the satellite and arrive where we are, times the speed of that signal. The radio signals travel at the speed of light, which is roughly 300 million meters per second, which is a really, really big number. Um, and to put that into English units, that's 186,000 miles per second. Um, and to give you some sense of perspective on that, uh, 186,000 miles, that means that in one second, a photon of light could circle the Earth more than seven times. So um, that's pretty fast. So what does that mean on a practical level? Well, if you think about it, if, just say for example, as I do in this image right here, if the signal takes one second to reach you, Okay. You multiply one second times the speed, 300 million meters per second, for example. That's one times 300 million, essentially. So that means that the object that sent the signal would be, have to be 300 million meters away, or 186,000 miles away, which is pretty far. Uh, that would put it somewhere between here and halfway in the moon. Um, now, if you could get it down to a tenth of a second, if it took a tenth of a second, that means that you would only be um, 30 million miles away. Uh, 30 million meters away, excuse me. Um, if you got it down to a hundredth of a second, okay, it would be 3 million meters away. Okay? And so if you keep reducing the fractional amount of time that, with which you can measure it, um, you can shrink the distance that we're talking about. Now, I'm talking about this in terms of the time delay that it takes, but imagine that you had an error in your time measurement so that you were only able to measure it to within um, a hundredth of a second, which is pretty fast. It'd be hard to, it, that would be hard to do. Um, that means that at best you could find your location within about three million meters of where you really were, which is very far away. <laughs> that would be very hard to work with. Uh, that would put you somewhere in you know, New England. Um, so that wouldn't be very precise. So it turns out that if we can get our time measurement down to really high precision, we can actually uh, record distances down to, to manageable uh, lengths. So if you're looking at this chart here, um, so I said before, a hundredth of a second, you're down to three millimeters, a thousandth of a second, you're down to 300,000, and you keep going down uh, 10,000, 100,000, a million, 
ten millionth, a hundred millionth of a second. And then when you can if you can measure time down to a billionth of a second, you can actually measure distances down to a third of a meter, about a foot. So that means that you could know your position within about a foot of its true location. How do you possibly measure anything down to a billionth of a second? Well, that's where the atomic clocks come in. The atomic clocks Atomic clocks are basically a really sophisticated kind of clock that tracks time by the pulsing of an atom, of a cesium atom to be specific. Now compare that to the way that a normal clock works by ticking off the seconds. Well, this ticks also, but it ticks a billion times a second. And it's every billionth that we can measure down to. And those are the types of clocks that are sitting aboard those satellites that are orbiting in space. And that's what allows us to um, uh, reduce the distances down to these manageable lengths and allow us to determine positions very, very accurately. Okay. Um, essentially the way it works is, um, just to give an example, say for example that we have a receiver and it gets a signal from a satellite and the signal takes about um, almost six hundredths of a second to arrive. And if you multiply that number, say 0.05914 second, I have these written down over here, um, times 186,000 miles a second, you're going to say that that's going to come down to about 11,000 miles. So by tracking the signal delay of 600th of a second, um, you know that you're about 11,000 miles from that satellite. The problem is though that that's in a spherical direction. I mean, you could be anywhere on that sphere and be 11,000 miles from that satellite. So that doesn't help you very much. So then you get a signal from a second satellite, and that signal takes a little about six and a half hundredths of a second to get to you. Right? Slightly different uh, time delay, but it's enough to calculate that you're now 12,000 miles from the known position of this other satellite. Again, it's a sphere around that known satellite, but if those two spheres overlap, then that starts to reduce the possibilities of what, where we are. So we're somewhere in here in that overlap. So we still need more. So then we get a signal from a third satellite and that one's down to about seven hundredths uh, of, a, of a second delay from the signal to arrive to us from that particular satellite. And then we figure out that's about 13,000 miles away. And again, we're looking for where these spheres overlap. Right? Now with three spheres, there's two possible places that we could be. One of them tends to be uh, very unlikely because it's, it's um, usually going to put us somewhere in space or in the middle of the Earth. But the fourth satellite is going to be the one that, that, that settles the issue about exactly where you are. So you need that fourth satellite to figure out essentially what's going on. And that's how, essentially how the GPS system figures out how, where you are. It calculates how far you are from four known satellite positions. And ideally even more than that. Most modern GPS systems in fact do more in order to increase the precision of, of the uh, reading about exactly where you are on Earth.